Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today what we're going to do is cover this cross. Um, I had a, a viewer request. He was having some problems making a cross. He wants to bling out the, the cross and have diamonds go all the way across it. I'm going to show you a quick and simple way to do that. And if you're having a hard time following this, I would suggest slowing down the video speed and just follow along. I'm trying, I will try to do my best to explain everything, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below and I will be glad to help. With that being said, I want to thank Alex for his question and let's get started on his cross. So the first thing we have to do is learn how to use the curve property or the curve path and we want to add it to the screen. So I'm going to add that now. So I'm going to shift A to add a, a, an object and we're going to go down to curve and I'm going to choose path. Now what that does is it adds a path to our screen. I'm just going to move it up a little bit so we can zoom in on it. It adds a path to our screen that's a straight line. Now this is a curve object. It is not a circle or an arc, but it still has the same properties as a curve. And the reason we're doing that is because we can add the diamonds using the jewel craft tool. I'm just going to expand that here. We can add the diamonds here by simply going to add diamonds and I'm going to select a four millimeter diamond, not a 40, a four millimeter diamond. We'll add that and I'm going to make this bigger. So we're going to hit S and we're going to size it and you can see it sizes along the Z axis. I'm going to size it up a little larger here. I'm going to take that diamond, I'm going to select it, I'm going to hold the shift key down. While holding the shift key down, I'm going to select our path. So now you can see our selected object, which is the last object we, we selected, is the path. The first object we have here, obviously in orange, is the diamond. And what I want to do now is use the jewel craft tool to scatter. And what that's going to do is scatter 10 stones along that path. And then, of course, we can, we can remove some, we can add some. Now remember, it's important not to click off of any of these objects, otherwise this panel will go away. If this panel goes away, you won't be able to change the number of diamonds. So I'm just going to go here and add uh, an 11th diamond, so we have 11 stones there, and you can see how that works. And with that done, I'm going to click off. You'll see our panel disappears, and now we're left with the four or the 11 diamonds and the path. So if I choose the NURBS path right there, you can see we can move it any way we want. And if I select all of these, I can duplicate these by hitting Shift D, then press Enter. And now I can move them offset. So I'm going to move them over. We're going to go over to the uh, Orth uh, orthographic view and I'm going to look down on this and I'm just going to grab this with the G key and I'm going to move these to about here and that looks good. I'm going to hit shift D again and duplicate that and again looking at it from the straight straight down I'm going to grab the G key I'm going to move that over here and just put those stones right about there. Now I like the way this looks but these two stones are out of place so I'm going to grab these two stones here Holding the shift key down, I select the second one. I will press the X key to delete, and those are gone. So there you can see we have our diamonds all in a row. Now the nice thing about that is I can select all of the diamonds. And with all the diamonds selected using the window over here, I can go ahead and add prongs and add cutters and do whatever we need to do from there. So that's pretty cool. So now that's done. What I want to do now is start over because I want to show you basically what Alex wants and he would like to make a cross. So I'm going to make a very generic cross that we're going to add some diamonds to. I'm going to hit Shift A. We're going to add a mesh and I'm going to go up to Cube and there is our cube. I'm going to size that about like so and we'll look at the width of this. This is six millimeters wide and I'm going to make that a little smaller. Let's make that uh, six even. Right, that's good enough. I'm going to size this along the Y axis. So we're going to hit S, Y and we're going to make that just about like so. 
and we can see that it is 36 millimeters. Let's just make this 40 millimeters. Let's go over here, we'll say 40, and let's just change this six, six. Okay, so now we have a six millimeter by six millimeter by 40 millimeter cross. Now we need to get the ends of the cross coming out. So I do this two ways. I'll either duplicate this and cross it, or I will do it a different way. I'm gonna hit edit. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna hit control R to add in an edge loop. And you can see there's our edge loop. I'm gonna move that over to here. I'm gonna do that again, control R, and I'm gonna click once and move it about here. That looks pretty good. And with that done, I'm gonna come over to the top here and select our face tool. I'm gonna to select this face. I'm gonna turn the model around and hold the shift key down and select the opposite face. So I've got this face selected as well as this face. Now I wanna make the side of the cross, so I'm gonna hit extrude. I'm gonna press the E key for extrude. And then I'm gonna hit S and then X to size this along the X axis. I'm gonna bring this out to, how's that? That looks pretty good. So there's our very basic simple cross. I'm gonna go back into object mode by pressing the tab key. <clears throat> of course I want this to be thinner, so I'm gonna hit S, Z, and I'm gonna make this Thin. I'm gonna make this, uh, we'll make this about 1.75 millimeters. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I wanna do now is I want to add a basic diamond pave across the whole surface of this dime, this cross. And how are we gonna do that? There's a couple ways to do it, but a very simple way to do it is, again, we're gonna, we're gonna use the curve tool, so I'm gonna hit Shift A, we're gonna come over to curve and we're gonna add in a path. I'm gonna bring that path up so we can see it. And it's aiming the wrong way. I wanna start, well, it doesn't matter which way we start. We'll start along the x-axis. So I'm gonna move that over to about the middle, right about here. That looks good. And I'm gonna size this along the x-axis. And if you watch carefully, I'm not gonna come over to the ends, what I wanna do is I wanna be a little shorter than that. I think I wanna be about here. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit so it's just hovering over our cross. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna grab that path, that curve, and I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm gonna hit Shift D and then press Enter to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna type in R to rotate along the Z axis. We'll press the Z key and then I'm gonna type in 90 and that makes another path running along the Y axis now. I'm gonna hit seven, so we're looking at that from the orthographic view. I'm gonna move this down so that it's about in the middle, and then we're gonna size this S, Y, and then I'm gonna size that. And if you can't see it, press the tab key. You can do this in edit mode, S, Y, and I'm just gonna get it to where I kinda of want to have my center row of diamonds. That looks good right about there. I'm gonna hit the tab key, go back into object mode. So there's my two starting lines that I'm gonna use for my pass. Remember these are curve objects, they're not mesh objects. This cross is a mesh object and these paths are curve objects. And you can tell by the little archway next to the name. So there's our nerves path and nerves path one, which is our duplicate. If we select that, you can see that's the one that runs along the Y axis. Okay, with that done, the next part we wanna do is go over to Jewelcraft and we're gonna select, um, I'm gonna come down here and go to Add Gem. I'm gonna type in a 1.25 millimeter diamond. I'm gonna hit OK, and that adds in our stone. I'm just gonna move that up so it's above the surface of our cross, just about like so. I'm pretty happy with that. With that done, just like, the, like it is, I want to have this diamond duplicated along this path. So I am going to select the diamond. I'm gonna hold the shift key down and grab the path that follows from top to bottom. With that done, I'm gonna hit scatter along curve. And you can see now we have 10 diamonds all the way up and down the length of the cross. Of course, we want more, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add in more until I get it to about where I want it. 
that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. With that selected, I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate that. Press Enter. And now I am going to move that along the side. And I'm going to move this down just like we did when I showed you how to do this before. I'm going to move this a little closer, just about like so. That looks pretty good. With that done, I'm going to hit Shift D again to duplicate this. And then I'm going to move these diamonds over to the other side, just like so. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So far, so good. Now, I want to have diamonds running along this path. So I'm going to move that right there. And how I'm going to handle this is very much the same. We're going to size this down and I'm going to move it over so that I'm only covering about, I'm going to put this in edit mode so we can see it. I'm going to move this over size it down just about like so put it right there i like that okay let's go add in another diamond so i'm going to go back into object mode pressing the tab key i am going to come down to jewel craft select another diamond 1.2 millimeter we're going to add that to our scene i'm going to bring that up just so it's above everything and let's see i want this to be about here and of course I'm going to move it down and just for giggles I'm going to put it over here on the side so it's right in the middle. With the diamond selected and being approximately in the middle of that scene, I'm going to move this in just a little bit so it's above the line. That looks good. I'm going to move that down just a hair right about there. And now I want to make this path be my diamond path. So I'm going to select a diamond, hold the shift key, select the path, and then we will hit scatter. And of course we have too many diamonds now, so let's bring this down to a point where they all fit. That looks good right there. So with that done, I am going to hit shift D and press enter. And then from the top, I'm going to move these over right about like so. And I'm going to move these out. And we'll get them about where we want, right about. They don't look too bad. Not perfect, guys, but I'm getting to the point where I like it. I'm going to hit Shift D and press Enter. I'm going to move these to the other side and about right there. So we're kind of in line with these diamonds here. And now I'm going to grab all of these diamonds while I'm holding the shift key down. I'm going to hit shift D, press enter, and now I'm going to move all of these to the opposite side, just like so. <clears throat> and there's the surface of my cross with the diamonds the way I want it. I'm going to select the cross. I'm going to make this a little thinner. S, Z, and I'm going to make this a little thinner like so because we don't need to be big. I'm going to move that up to about here. That looks good. Kind of happy with that. Now you could do a, a few things to make this cross look a little nicer. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give the cross a beveled edge so that we have a good view of a tapered side to the cross. So with the cross selected, I'm going to press Control A. I'm going to come down and hit Rotation and Scale. So we're going to apply the Rotation and Scale to the cross. I'm going to go into Edit Mode with the cross selected. And I can select the surfaces. So I'm going to hold the Shift key down and click on all the surfaces that I want to select, which are just the upper surfaces. With those done, I'm going to hit Control B and I'm going to drag my cursor out to give that a beveled edge. And I'm just going to use my mouse wheel to give it a little bit of a archway across the cross, just like so. Go into object mode by pressing the tab key, and now you can see our cross has all the diamonds on it, and we have a really cool look with all the stones selected. Okay, that's how you'd get that far. Now, of course, to add in all your prongs and do the cutouts, I'm just going to select a couple diamonds here. I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to hold the shift key down, select these 
six stones and you could select all of them if you like but I'm going to just work with these six and then you can go and figure out how to do it with your model or design. I'm going to hit prongs Okay, and while the prongs are selected, I'm going to use the position to rotate them around wherever I want them. So I'm going to get them to the point where I'm happy with those. And maybe I want to add in three prongs and do that. That looks pretty good. It's giving me a good place to set up. I want these to be a little lower, so I'm going to lower the top just like so. That looks really good right there. Uh, maybe I'll make them bigger because, of course, when we 3D print these, we're going to have to set the stones and buff those out. So I'll give them a little more beef. With those same stones selected, I'm going to come over to the cutter tool in Jewelcraft. I'm going to hit the cutter button and it adds the cutters. Cutters are fine. I don't have to make any modifications to them. So now I'm going to grab a cutter. I'm going to hold the shift key down. I'm going to select the other cutters like so. So now I've got all six cutters done. Holding the shift key down now, I'm going to select the cross. I'm going to come over to my Boolean tools. It's either in the Boolean tab or the edit tab. And I'm going to use the difference option. And that is going to cut the holes out in our cross. So you can see by looking at the bottom of the cross now, we have the holes made for the bottom of the diamonds. Okay, now that's done. I'm going to select these prongs here. So I'm going to hold the shift key down and now select all the prongs in my model. And that looks good. I'm going to hold the shift key down and hold the, and select the cross. And then I'm going to come over to Union on the Boolean tools. And now what it does is it adds those prongs to my model. So if I hit the tab key, you can see that those prongs are now part of the cross itself. I could go ahead and do all the other uh, prongs and cutters on this model, but if you follow these steps, you'll see that it works the same all the way across. I'm going to give this cross a bit of a texture, so we're going to make that, uh, let's see, in metal. We're going to give this a silver tone. I'm going to go ahead and add in a plane so that we have something underneath it. I'm going to size that up. And we have a nice, smooth, sterling silver cross with all of these stones in it. Pretty slick. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And guys, if you want to get the Blender Gems library, um, you can get that uh, through either Patreon or buying it from our website. And I'll put links in below where you can go to these sites and uh, get that Blender Gems library, as well as my upcoming tools that I'll be putting up online. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day and enjoy the weekend.